Now I am picking up where we left off. Uh, hey everyone, thank you for joining. Um, we are doing a little bit of OCaml. Uh, last time we met, we were doing uh, uh, some work in OCaml to get some data off of an air quality monitor, push that data into a database, and then ideally uh, getting data back out of that database and doing something interesting with it in like a web app. So that's where we are. Uh, done a little bit, just done a little bit since we last met. Um, let's talk about it. So I'm going to start the database. Hopefully it works on this machine. And I forgot that when I started the database, uh, <laughs> I forgot that when I started the database, I run it in the foreground now. And uh, something we ran into last time was that rad is not naturally on our path but it kind of is sometimes. Uh, let's see what's up. Oh, right. It doesn't support a version. Well, let's go ahead and open up code and see what's up. Um, probably should have fixed this before I joined. Eh, that's life. So let's go ahead and close everything. So there's a new script, or a modified script in here called DB. This is a different workstation db okay so it prunes out any old docker container with the target container name and you know I'm just using kind of some dummy uh, username and passwords for the db super user like postgres postgres pulling down timescale db which is just postgres with some fancy uh, extensions installed that's cool um, then let's see yeah, after, you know, try a couple times to, uh, try a couple times to, of course, initialize the database. What does that look like? Um, I read in a file initializer thingy mabob and, you know, write, you know, uh, you can't, certain SQL statements you can't do in a single transaction. And so in a user, for instance, create user, create database, grant all privs. Yeah, it doesn't like to do all all of these in the same transaction, so I I split them up and I execute them uh, serially one by one by doing a split on the line and then passing it into the this fancy little PG client um, that I found on Deno Land, which was quite nice, and just go ahead and pass it in as raw SQL into the query, and then uh, uh, again just read in that table and pass the table query into that client as well. Uh, I was considering, you know, creating a stream and streaming it through psql standard in, and in fact I do do that elsewhere in this file. Uh, right here, emit seed data, and I pipe that into psql, which is a copy operation. And that way I can do, you know, this many <laughs> uh, 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 records inserting into the database performantly, that way I don't have to r read 500,000 records into memory. That would be crazy and inefficient, especially if doing them one by one. So copy lets you do a bolt, right? Uh, and I found that, you know, years worth of data costs roughly 200 megabytes uh, in Postgres without any optimizations uh, applied. And I just wanted to see, you know, what does a year's worth of data cost me file size wise? And uh, uh, that's what I found by doing that, which was kind of interesting. And yeah, so uh, that's a thing. So I wanted to start the database, but of course the database just wouldn't start up. Uh, red DB. Let's try it again and remember what the error was. I'm going to make sure this thing's actually picking up my mic. Yeah, sorry about that if I just blew your drums out. Cool. Uh, bummer, couldn't eat, init the DB because rad wasn't found. Yeah, my dot files are all. Uh, borked on this uh, on this machine. So let's see. What's my path? My path, as you can see, is quite quite complicated. Uh, user bin, user bin, deno bin. Oops. And I think that may have something to do with it. You can see otherwise it's home C derringe and a lot of these other ones, but for some reason the deno one is a tilde. Um, let's just go briefly look at that. Alright, Deno. 
Yeah, yeah, that's not cool. Let's try... Let's try home. Ugh, sorry. Uh, I need to use this friggin' editor. Okay. I'm gonna reload my dot files. And echo path again. And where are you, Deno? Oh, still there, so... That probably... This is not the right button. That's the correct button. Deno dir, Deno bin. Hmm. Uh, uh, uh. Dot. Let's see. Bash. RC. Echo path. Where are you, Deno? There you are again. Echo. Home. Hmm. So that's all a little suspicious, isn't it? Let's do. Deno bin. Make sure I don't have it listed more than once. How oh, very interesting. Maybe I'll. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <sighs> you probably think I'm going to be incompetent after just doing the same thing over and over again. Let's see if this even changes. Right, like uh, export path equals home seed orange. Deno bin. Is that even taking? Yeah, I know. Everybody just relax. Okay, look at that. Uh, that took. Now, of course I got a bunch of other crazy errors. <laughs> less pipe? What the heck is less pipe? Did I fat finger something? I must have fat fingered something. Less pipe. Huh. Okay. Uh, I do have this in here. It's only in this. I don't even use something different for less. So let's just get rid of that. I don't care about that. That one, that one I have meddled with. Ugh, what a drag. This isn't even remotely. This is what happens when you switch development environments before you start a project. But you know, whatever. So I have this thing, and I think I have something called... Wait a sec, T-put. That's a critical thing. Command cannot be located because bin, user bin, is not in the path variable. Well, that's actually terrible, and we all know why that is. It's because I just borked it right here. <laughs> yeah. If I would have just read the thing, um, that would have been more helpful. Exit, exit. Looks like it's still occurring because of something. So let's see what changed. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't want that change. And, oh, I guess I did want that change. Oops. Um, that was dot bash. Bash profile. Dot bash profile. Oh, good grief. I really ruined it now. Uh, is this on my path? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We really did it now. Revert. Ah, uh, you're good. Alright, there we go. A nice silent shell. <laughs> ah, ooh, that could have been close. Profile. It looks like I had changed this little buddy to tilde. And we'll just go ahead and restore that. Cool. So uh, now the question is you know, I, I didn't retain that change where I modified the path. Uh, let's see if it persists though, because I did delete some other malarkey. 
Nope, I didn't. Okay, so let's head back here. Where is it? There it is. And yeah, let's. Th this isn't making sense to me why that uh, uh, change alone would not uh, address the issue. Oh, DB initialized. There we go. So this must have worked. It didn't work there, but I'm not sure why. Uh, it must have worked here. What? <laughs> I'm not crazy pills. Uh, I must be on crazy pills, right? Gosh dang it. I work on a Mac all day for work. Uh, play games every now and again on Windows. And of course... Here I am on Linux, trying to get back into good old Linux. And what are we working with? Yarn, config, cargo, Python, FNM. Look, we've got two deno bins. That's the problem. That's just dumb. Why are there two of them? That's very irritating. Uh, yep. Well. Uh, not gonna deal with it right now. I'll deal with it when you guys aren't here. Cool, so I've got a DB. That's pretty sick. Let's see what we can do with that DB. So I'm gonna start the server. Red start. Unable to read directory DB. Ignoring, ignoring, oh no! Yeah, so this is an error message from Dune. Uh, there's a statement in the Dune file specifically as it pertains to DB. Let's find it. Uh, must not be that one, must be this Dune file. There's two Dune files. Oh, maybe not. Maybe there's not an explicit statement, but whatever. Dune is like, oh wait, yeah, there it is. Durs DB. Where is that? Durs. Thanks. Thanks. Cool. Uh, you gotta be kidding me. Let's use a more trustworthy tool, perhaps. Durs. Nope. Let's go old school. Oh man, I don't want case insensitive. That's what that little I means. Uh, okay, things are looking maybe a little more interesting, but let's make it even more interesting. I think this, that question mark will, I need to escape it. Okay, no, it just didn't find DERS, and it couldn't search in DB, because DB is owned um, by root, which the container owns. I should probably just run the container as a different PID, such that the DB, um, such that the DB folder is just not owned by root. I should probably own it by, like, uh, I should probably run it with user, user, echo user. One moment. Yeah, calm down. Got some dinner. Too. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's have a bite. All right. Right on. Um, in fact, maybe I can update this database to use uh, a better user. So let's go to s no 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 db. And let's find the db task. Um, I think I probably just shell out. I don't probably don't use Docker uh, Docker machine API bindings. I'm probably doing just shell. Yep. Okay, let's try it. Uh, you know, uh, user user. Not sure if that's going to work or not. I guess we'll find out. Uh, sudo db. Oh, I'm not even mounting db in there right now. So it's just kind of a dud. It's just kind of a dud folder. 
what is problem? Waiting for a container. Context cancel. What does that even mean? Context canceled. Uh, unable to find user, see Derringe, no matching entries, and password file. Cool. So, well, maybe we'll visit that later. Anyway, uh, that thing didn't stop running, even though the connection to the DB got severed, so what's going to happen now? <laughs> uh, let's try hitting it. Uh, localhost 8000. Hey, you failed to read sensors. That is not good. Um, that's not good. Right? Why did it fail to read sensors? I mean, I'm glad that it gave me a nice error message right there. So, I don't like that, right? I restarted it and it worked. Um, that means that something bad happened, but the server kept running. Hmm. Oh, like right data. Something bad happened, and the server kept running. Let's repeat that failure, actually, because that's kind of interesting. And I'm going to curl it again. So I really want that database down. And it just said, failed to read sensors. Let's start it back up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Back gateway. Back gateway? Huh. Mark bundle as not supporting multi use. Huh. That's so interesting. I mean, I don't expect it to work right now, but I expect a different error. So let's go look at the associated OCaml. Mm. Let's see. So we're grabbing a connection, and with connection, we call create connection with some just hard-coded credentials right now. And of course, this turns back, returns back a PostgreSQL connection T, where it's an LWIT T. And yeah, 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 yeah. So how do I like air handle stuff going wrong with Postgres, like how do I handle an exception there? You know, first off, one of these is supposed to have an on exit callback. That. On exit. So let's add that param. Uh, yeah. And is this going to be cool? This function, the function applied to this argument has con closed. This argument cannot be applied with label on eggs and uh, why not? Oh, unused variable. Okay. So function. Um, yeah, I think it actually gave me a hint there, didn't it? Con close. No, no it didn't. What's the type? Come on, editor. Tell me what this type is supposed to be. I could have sworn you were going to tell me before. Eggs into unit. Alright, well how do I unpack that? <laughs> uh, I think I can just do something like... Exception E? No, that doesn't make any sense. What is this? This is an exception? Maybe I can just console log the exception. Console dot error error. Blast! What is this thing grumpy about? This the function applied to this argument 
has type blah has type con closed con closed I mean that seems relevant right like a connection closed that would be an exception is it trying to tell me that it knows about a possible exception Or does this have a thing called con closed? I don't know how to read OCaml very well. The function applied to this argument has type con closed. Uh, look at this, but this is a server con, not a other type of con. This argument cannot be applied to whatever. Um, let me see what happens. Let me call that. Whoops. Let that equal that. Oh. I'm in the wrong friggin' thing, man. That might be what's going on. Okay. What's it grumpy about now? The function applied to this argument has no type. I can't. Come on. Be better. Has type. Oh. There we go. Yay. You happy now? Are you happy now? Syntax. Syntax error after unclosed left paren. Okay. Um, you know, I don't see why that's a syntax error, but let's format this thing. Okay, we'll format not found in the tree. Classic. Okay, so let's do, um, okay, we'll create terminal in the current sandbox. Ah, the tool chain may have not yet loaded. Sandbox. Okay, you're gonna be cool now. Oh, camel. I swear to God. Output. All right. It has no air output, even though it failed. That's annoying. I think I can do something like this. Easy X. OCaml format. Yep. Okay. Um, I don't know. The extension's not working, but if I call easy, it says, hey, you have a local OCaml sandbox. X, execute this executable from the sandbox. Yeah, I think that's what's going on anyway. Um... Let's just simplify this. Cool. All right, we've updated the code a little bit. Maybe we're going to get an exception logged out now. Um, yeah. I would have hoped it would have been right there because <laughs> the connection got dropped. But uh, looks like that didn't happen. Bummer. Yep, yep, didn't happen there, so we gotta look somewhere else to find out. How do I catch an exception? Or does it even throw? What happens when that connection severed? It's got a create connection here. Let's look at connect. Connect takes an info string in a unit and yeah it's not helping me easy postgres sql let's see if this dude has anything to say about it now i mean he might be doing everything right it might be me that just doesn't know 
what to do here. Uh, old connections, that's fine. Operation result. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, that's an interesting idea. I wonder if I should get a connection every time I try to do something rather than create a connection up front and just like silently fail. Mm. Yeah, like what behavior would I expect? Like the connection's terminated. Like this is a resource and it's not like we're calling something. Like the resource is just like uh, invalid. So, hmm. But this just shows nothing. So what are we trying to do with that resource? Maybe that will um, yield some insight. What are we trying to do with that resource? So we call it into, we call onto oncon. That's why I was confused. Okay. And I have this thing that says on sense fail, ready to read sensors. Oh my gosh, it's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Now, how do I get an X into a string? Hmm. How do I get an exception to a string? Yeah, that's a fair question. How do I do that? It doesn't even know it's an exception here. Hmm. Let's see. Let's look at their examples. Exception. L with fail exception. You know, I confess I don't know enough about exceptions here. Um, maybe I can try doing a sprintf format. Printf. Sprintf. And I could do a string and pass eggs in. in. Uh, you know, that doesn't actually err, so it's kind of nice, but type string is not compatible with type eggs in. That's to be expected. Oh, gosh. Hey, Ben. Uh, am I running Pop OS? I should be running Pop OS, but. Of course, I'm incompetent, and I'm just running Ubuntu. <sighs> oh, camel. Eggs in to string. Uh, look at these old school ducks. Uh, facilities for printing exceptions and inspecting the current call stack. T is eggs in to string. Well, that seems. Ah. Print X C two string. Well, pff, let's use that. Uh, print X two string. Exon, Exon, Jamal Lee. The expression has type. <laughs> okay, deprecated. All right, cool. Exon? Sure. Hey, look, that worked. That's great. Can't wait to see what it has to say. All right, so that's cool. We're going to kill the database, and we're going to try again. And, yeah, we got something slightly better. Fail to read sensors. Assert failure. <laughs> no! Assert failure. Well, man, that's not good enough. You assert failure. Hmm. So, let's see. What does this thing respond? It responds with an Elwit. Um, you know, if the promise from Elwit I want to flush that to the client, but then I just want to friggin' 
crash the server. I'm not sure how to tear down. Uh, I'm not sure how to tear down the server here. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, it looked like you bailed, Ben. <laughs> I bailed too. Uh, this is not interesting. It is interesting. Uh, you know, you know what we can do. Mm -hmm. We can bind this thing. Uh, let's see. What does it need to be? An exit. A server respond. Uh, e. And I could do E. Well, I, let's actually look at that for a second. Actually, it'd have to be L that return E, so I need to actually do a map. But what if I just want to raise this thing, right? Like, raise. Exit. I just want this thing to just game over this mofo. Raise the given exception value. This statement never returns. Or has an unsound type. Yeah, that's probably right. It was probably a bad idea. I don't know, though. Okay, you're being grouchy with me. Fine. Yeah. Uh-huh. What if I just raise? Yeah, you don't know what to do anymore. No one has any idea what to do. Hey, look, it won't start because the DB is not up. That's good. Not very interesting, though. Let's start the server. Cool. Let's kill the DB. And now... Crash. Damn it! It didn't crash at all. It just gave me a worse... <laughs> it just gave me a worse thing. It gave me a 500. Um, you know, that's not good, right? I did a bind. Oh, I did a map. I did a map. And I expected that to have finished flushing the stream, but apparently it didn't. And that makes me sad. Um, okay. We need to go learn about the co-HTTP server. Uh-huh. What's going on, co-HTTP? Teach me more. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's fine. But I'm, like, uh, not using the client here, I'm using the server. Basic server tutorial. Request body. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I've already got all that good stuff going. And, uh... Yeah, well... <laughs> this just brings you right to the docs. Portable Elwit implementation... Lightweight threads implementation. Uh, maybe I can like figure out how to stop the server here or crash the server. Server, here we go. Response. These are variants of response. Expert. Oh, that's scary. Using response expert with response T. And an IO function is expected. Yeah, I don't think I need stuff. Um, make expert, just make. Uh huh. Respond to not, respond, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, how do I tear down the server? Co. You know. It's a good idea is to ask in Discord. These guys are like pretty cool on here and uh, know more than I do, so let's go see them. Oh, Camel. Hey, friends. I'm using Co HTTP server. I have a 
Easy Postgres SQL uh, connection that on fail I would like to well you know what that's unnecessary information if there is an exception I would like to gracefully ideally tear down my server I'm looking at not seeing anything obvious right off the bat. Any tips or reps? Cool. Let's see if those smart folks have anything for us. And I'm just also wondering if they maybe have a doc site. This is like seems like a big project, so here we go. <laughs> uh, not really their docs here, but sure. Uh, sure. Uh-huh. Okay. Shut. Tear. Close. Uh, grumbles. My guess is it might have to be an abstraction in front of the server, perhaps? Or some state that, yeah, some state that uh, we track inside of the server and then just like kill the process. That seems like a lot of work though. Hmm. NPM package, hilarious. First thing that comes up. No JS, no JS. Yeah, we're not looking for a spec express, man. Minus node. Minus express. How about OCaml? Uh yeah. <laughs> I know my problem. Hilarious way to start off a problem statement. It's been a connection. Shutdown initiated by the remote server. Oh, Ben, he's back. Man, how do you freaking tear it down? The shutdown is only noticed after the next request. Yeah, you're already too far into... Too far into that thing. That's not what we're looking for. Okay, we'll TLS. Getting, getting warmer, warmer, colder, oh, colder. It's in a Haskell Reddit. That's not what I'm looking for. All right, all right. Well, let's go see if our buddies on Discord said anything. I'm just going to go ahead and just pause outright on this topic. And, uh, yeah. Go to something else and figure out how to do graceful teardown later. If I do figure it out, I will share it. So, this can go away. And we can go ahead and get rid of this raise. It's not helping us. This little new error message is a little helpful, though. All right, let's start it all back up. So something that I didn't share was, check it out, like, uh, you know, if it's successful right now, just every time I do a get against the API, uh, for whatever reason, I just, um, I also just do a dump of the, <clears throat> sorry, I do a load of that into the database so I can actually get into the database. I'm sorry, Ben. I'm sorry that the stream keeps cutting out. It's very disappointing. Might be you, yeah. You're known to have not reliable internet. That's what you're famous for. <laughs> uh, come on. Uh, PSQL not found. Now, we super had this issue the other day. We installed the... Um, where do we install? 
we installed some binaries that should have brought that uh, 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 onto my system, but clearly it's missing still, so I gotta go refine those. Ubuntu install psql. How to install and connect to psql. Sure. libpq. Everybody's got to love good old libpq. This is probably what I want. Postgres SQL client. Sounds just about right. Looky, looky. There it is. Coming in hot. Process those triggers. Process those man triggers. Sweet. So I'm now uh, I have an interactive um, Postgres, I don't know, psql connection. And so I can select everything from sensor data, sensor, oh, select everything from sensor data, sensors data. Oh, for crying out loud, what's the table name? <laughs> table. Oh, okay, let's go look at the init table. Sensor stats, sensor stats, of course. Hey, look at that. So, you know, the database has all sorts of awesome stuff in it. Um, the next thing we need to do is figure out how I want to get the data back out of here. Um, you know, this is not a production project. <laughs> it's going to be running on a private network. So I'm not worried about security. I'm not worried about, you know, overloading the database. The only person calling it is going to be me and maybe my Kindle every hour to paint a picture on an e-ink display. Pretty exciting stuff. So maybe I will just accept user input blindly and um, see if I can't get a Postgres cursor and see if I can't stream back data from the cursor into the HTTP stream. That would be pretty dope. Don't you think that would be dope? I think it'd be dope. Yeah, let's try and do that. So, uh, maybe... <laughs> Sorry, Ben, I burned you. Yeah, yeah, so maybe I'll add, like, another route, right? There's probably some router for this silly, uh server right right now i just have a callback called you know uh, create server handler and you know uh on sense request uh, it just does that work but now i need to like conditionally do work so to conditionally do work i'm going to need to match on the request and probably extract out the path name out of the request so let's do that yeah so uh, uh, this will be great. Um, this, let's see. Uh, I need to do a match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do a match. Um, so let uh, uh, handler equal match rec dot. Oh boy, that was unexpected. <laughs> I expected rec to, you know have uh, some well-known value in there, but of course, because this is a standalone function, and it's not attached to whatever this thing is. Server create, so it's part of this callback API. I gotta go look at the callback API for this. So callback takes a, mm, whatever this means, <laughs> conduit. What the heck's a conduit? A conduit dot flow? Oh man, that is some advanced shit right there. Uh, takes a conduit flow. All right, sweet. And request of T. Um, maybe I will just temporarily do some good stuff right here. And uh, I'll just like copy and paste this line. All right, and then I'll just start typing out 
fun here because I don't know how to do it in OCaml otherwise. Maybe there's one way I could do it, which is open up UTOP. But I don't know enough about UTOP yet. Top. Uh, okay, so the args were... It's these things. Con ID, rec, and body. So con rec body. Reveal yourself, rec. Haha! -ha! I knew you were something good and useful. You were of type <laughs> request T. Alright, so I can probably just decorate that or annotate that directly here. Request uh, T. Oh, yeah. Look at me go, babies. Damn it! <laughs> Come on, request. <laughs> what is request.meth? Oh, man. That's not good. It's probably method, but it sure looks like methamphetamines. And that is the wrong thing that you want in your request body. Uh, where is... You know, this is totally weak sauce. Like, uh... Oh, resource is the string. Okay, so I need to match on rec.resource. Yeah! Alright, match on rec.resource. And, you know... Ooh, ooh, how do you do a, um, how do you do a match with a substring in frigging OCaml? You know, that would, I probably don't actually have to do a substring match. I can just do a full string match. Let's do it. Uh, so let's do that on, um, sup. <laughs> and sup is going to, obviously, uh, 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 we're just going to respond with a dummy string right now just to see if like this even works and it's not going to be bad gateway it's going to be uh, okay and it's going to be body is going to be so and then otherwise otherwise if it's for anything else we're just going to do our classy co-handler and you know we're going to invoke it right here boom babies uh oh yeah i need to do a with oh not boom babies we are not doing boom babies and it's because i forgot to write in uh match can i do a match like this even can i even match like this maybe i should just be matching in like the whole function and then yeah, let's do the simple first, fancy later. You know how I like doing not simple stuff first. I like doing complicated stuff right away. Straight to jail. Okay. And then I'm just going to just, uh, I'm not going to return an Lwit uh, thingy. I'm going to do an Lwit return of all this great stuff. Now, you're grouchy, why are you grouchy? This expression has type OK, but an expression was of type, expected of type status code. Yeah, that's probably t true, but I thought that was an OK status code. So where am I? Oh, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Capital OK instead of O lower K? How was I supposed to know that? All right, so it's happy with uh, uh, this matcher, but it doesn't like this one for some reason. Why not? Let us get the compiler error. And clear it all out, mother truckers. Hmm. Well, we have a very helpful error message, all color-coded and everything. This type doesn't match what is expected. Expecting T flush bool unit to T response T co HTTP lightweight thread body. The contradicting part? Uh, <laughs> uh, mm, uh, something tells me that's not the contradicting part. Yeah, see, not the contradicting part. All right. Suddenly, if I just remove this case, everything's happy. So, uh, that's what happens when you do inference everywhere 
Like, it doesn't know what the, the right type is supposed to be. So, what do I need to be doing? Maybe I'll just... Whatever, I'll just do another Elwick catch. And I will just emulate what I did before, because I don't know Camel. <laughs> and then I'll add Onsense Fail here. And, of course, if it's just then it's happy. Great! So, if this starts... Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so... Now, if I do, you know, get sup, I expect to see sup in the curl back. Uh, local host 8000. Sup! Sup! What about suppers? Ooh, look at all that sweet data. And people don't even know what they're missing. Look at this O'Camel radness! I don't even know, man. I mean, that was a little hairy, wasn't it? <laughs> Why did I have to return it in a in a catch? Does that return a different... I mean, let's see, it's a function that, let's see, takes a unit. Uh, the first function takes a unit to be executed, but the first argument takes a unit to be executed. The second argument, whatever, uh, takes an uh, error callback and then it returns AFT. Um, but that should have, you know, frankly, I think the prior one should have also returned AFT as well. I'm almost sure of it. Like, uh, LWIT return. Well, does server already return an LWIT of T? Ooh, it already does maybe do an LWIT of T. Uh, uh, I have to know. I just have to know. But reading OCaml types is rather difficult. Hey, this type... Uh, okay, T is a uh, lightweight response. Response T with body. Oh, was expecting this. Ah! Because I need to give it the unit. Gotcha! Yes! See, it was expecting a thunk to the same type. I just saw that this was the exact same as this. And uh, because... How did I know? I mean, I just saw that it was a function, and I realized I need to call this function um, to return the promise. Lightweight is a promise library. Ben, are you bored out of your mind yet? Suppers. <laughs> Snacks on. Uh... Yeah, I can't, I, you know, I'm so glad you're here with me right now. I'm sorry we're not talking. We should be talking. We should figure out a way to just talk, right? How do we just talk? How do you get talk mode in um, friggin' Twitch? That's an upgrade. Okay, so this should run, and let's make sure Suppers still takes. And how about Sup? Sweet. So that all is still good, but SUP's obviously not the route I want to use in real life. I want to use something like, uh, I don't know, I, like, I want to get time series data. <laughs> I want, uh, uh, let's call it, um, oh boy, naming is hard, huh? What is this? What is this data that I'm after? I'm after air quality yeah whatever air quality that's lame AQI it's not really AQI it's various measurements it's stats air stats air stats <laughs> sure okay that's good I like air stats now it's time to combine streams with streams babies all right, so I'm going to prep this function over here. I'm going to say let um, uh, you know stream air stats. <laughs> I'm just going to be over verbose <laughs> from PG to HTTP, and that's obviously it's going to need a connection. It's going to need a connection to the database so I can open a cursor to the DB and um, that's all I'm going to take right now, and I'm just going to hard code in a query. So, you know, I need to do uh, 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 
Like, how do you open up a, a friggin' cursor? Rad measurements. That's actually a great idea. I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> Easy Postgres SQL. How do I get a cursor from this mother trucker? Let's see if he just search for keywords. Cursor? How about cursor? Ooh, uh oh. No cursors. Um, ooh, I wonder if he didn't need to, because I, I'm pretty sure this is like a. It's a wrapper. Yeah, it's a wrapper, isn't it? Isn't it? So maybe query takes an argument that, ooh, gosh, but a, a promise is like a fundamentally different ab abstraction than a cursor, which is like a stream, right? So I actually don't want, uh, I actually don't want to do a, I don't want to resolve a promise full of data. I want to get a stream. So what is this connection again? Let's remember. I can probably just tap into it and inspect it. Let's see. So this is a, I actually think this is an easy PostgreSQL connection. And look, it looks like it's a, it looks like it's a type alias. Yeah, it is a type alias. It's a type alias uh, directly into PostgreSQL connection. So I bet, I bet I can look up how to get a cursor with just that. All right, PGO camel. Curse, cursor. Oh, for come on, man. <laughs> uh, the camel library does this. Yeah. The API file is this. It's well documented, uh, and it, it can be found online. For more detailed information on how to at, interact with PostgreSQL. Look at the Postgres docs. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's trolling. Come on, man. Cur cursor. Hey, ref cursor. Pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You want to get just drop down to TCP? Just want to do straight TCP. Forget HTTP in the browser. I wonder if there's a way you could do that with um, maybe WebAssembly. No, I don't think the browser, the, brown, the browser has sandbox network interfaces. I don't think it lets you just do a raw TCP connection. Maybe using the peer-to-peer -peer APIs, you could actually establish just a raw TCP connection. I don't know much about those though, or if they're even real. <laughs> uh, types, query parameters. Handling results of commands and queries. Well, that seems like something I'm like, kind of interested in. Uh, uh, connection. Hey, I did that earlier. Yeah, okay, so that's like not... Uh, uh, hey, connection failure. I was wondering about this earlier. Oh, it's just a tuple. Okay, it's not teaching me anything. Ah! How do I get a cursor? Cursor. Cursor. I'm going to go through every page and just search for cursor. Ref cursor. I don't care that this page is unlikely to have anything interesting. How about this one? Is this all the same page? This is all the same page. <laughs> it's just scrolling up or down. I'm a dummy. Cool, so don't know how to do this. Uh, let's guess, let's guess and check. Let's just guess and check. I call this con, and I'm actually going to give con a type. How do I type a labeled argument? Uh, ben, yeah, you probably are not aware what this thing is. This tilde is how you do named arguments in OCaml. So, you know, this is a key value pair, um, all in one arg, just like Python named args, I suppose. And this is a PostgreSQL connection. And so I'm hoping now I can just do like con dot something. You know what I'm saying? But it actually doesn't like me right now. 
If I don't name it, I can give it a type annotation. I don't know how to do... <laughs> how do you... Oh, maybe that's it. No, uh, maybe that's not it. Uh, okay. Con dot query. Con dot... Uh, I don't know if it's actually like an object like this. I just assume it is. This seems wrong. Maybe I, maybe I need to do... Well, how am I doing the other queries? I'm doing an insert somewhere. I'm doing an insert... Uh, db insert. Ah! Command! I'm doing something called command. Sure. Sure. One all command returning. Okay, so this is from easy PostgreSQL, but now I'm more interested in looking at the functions out of just straight PostgreSQL. Yep, here. This is the ML, not the MLI file. Reveal in sidebar. That wasn't a very good reveal, but sure. Uh, this sucks. stopped. I might be halted. You know, I should always Google post PostgreSQL connection status, error, get copy result, large object, polling status, full type, F type flush status, put results, result status, seek command, invalid, whatever. Whoa, abs time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Command, maybe it's just an arg to command. I'll check that in a sec. Get copy here, and look at all this stuff. What is all this stuff? What is a Postgres polygon? Is that some sort of uh, database type? That'd be kind of cool. Void. Do it with the easy plus cross. There's not it. Ah. What's the difference between con and rec? Oh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, poor naming, really. Uh, 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 con is a database connection as opposed to rec, which is an HTTP connection um, from the server handler. So, yeah. Well, confusingly, though, <laughs> confusingly, uh, there is this thing called con ID, which I don't know exactly what it is, uh, but that actually is related to the HTTP server, not to the database. So bad, bad naming on my part. Okay, I'm all PostgreSQL cursor. See, the reason I'm interested in doing a cursor is because uh, I plan on shipping a ton of data to the browser. And so I want to get the stream going, like, uh, right away. And if this were a node, I would know exactly how to do it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm not. Uh, let's ask these guys, too. Also, anyone know how to get a cursor with PostgreSQL? Trying to learn how to stream data from PG to HTTP. Co HTTP. That server. That request. Well, actually, it's just that request. This is not looking great. Uh, hey, Postgres OCaml, examples, cursor. Hey, look at that. Nice work, Mamotl. Oh, brother. 
<laughs> oh no. Uh, uh, I don't know what this is. C exec? What is that? C exec? This seems dangerous. C exec? What is that? This looks like it might be some sort of um, pre-processing thing. Uh, yeah, so he says begin. He opens up a statement. He gets a cursor. Select from his argv. That's cool. And then expect tuples OK in my cursor. And then print string tuple entry zero from I to the uh, for I to array length of tuple minus one. Interesting, he's calling it a tuple, but then he's calling array length. Like, uh, what's up? What's your data structure here? Do print string. For loops are very un camel, very uncool, very unhip, very imperative programming, not functional programming. Very weak sauce. But okay, so he's just iterating over and just printing stuff out and printing a new line. Sure. Yeah. All right. Close cursor. Huh. I mean, I guess I could just copy and paste that. Uh, but. I don't think the C exec thing is going to be cool. Let's try it. Oh, you meant with, oh, without the tilde? Oh, that's just a positional argument. Yeah, so like, uh, let my function A, B, C, that's just a function that has three args, uh, ordered arguments. Yeah, and you'll see in some cases, uh, I have one argument, which is this, which is uh, something called the unit, and it's essentially like, hey, I want to make a function, and it doesn't actually take any data, but I want to delay its execution, so just uh, use the unit to delay its execution, and it's pretty common. A lot of interfaces expect a function that just takes a unit, where everything's just like pre-bound pre and ready to go, uh, uh, uh. but you want to call that function with no arguments, so you call it with unit um, to do stuff. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Or did I put you to sleep? Oh man, I'm over my over my hour. That's fine. I want to go a little bit more. Let's see if this even compiles if I need some sort of like preprocessor. Oops. I didn't copy and paste it sufficiently enough. Okay. Um, Mano, boy. Now, he probably opened up PostgreSQL. Aha! That might actually bring in the C exec stuff. So, this actually could compile. This actually could compile. Uh, 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 uh. Let's get rid of this for a second and see if we can't recompile. Uh, okay. What did, what did you get sad about? What are you sad about in your life? Uh, why are you sad about that? This constructor, okay, expects zero arguments. But one's applied here. Well, that's no good. On sensors read. What are you talking about? Read sensors, definitely. Uh, takes a connection, yeah. And um, read sensors returns something that has a sensor stat in it. Yeah, what's up? So I must have just done something very evil. I must have done something very evil, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's not okay. So um, here's what I think is happening here. 
OK, the symbol OK, I think, is being overridden by one of the packages uh, I imported. So I think if I did result dot OK, <laughs> yeah, that's uncool. Uh, there's multiple symbols in this file's namespace called OK. There was a collision, and it like broke stuff. I find that offensive. Uh, I find that offensive. I think maybe Postgres SQL did that. I don't know what this exclamation point is all about, but yeah, let's see if it compiles. Ugh. Hey, what's up? Uh, command failed, reformat error. Uh, error. Alert deprecated, alert deprecated, alert deprecated, air alert deprecated. Sh sure. Okay, so what am I supposed to use then? I'm supposed to use camel sys. I think that's because I opened core, and core replaces the standard library. It's kind of some warts in OCaml, um, if you ask me. Whatever, though. Let's do it at once. Camel sis. Camel sis. Okay. Camel sis. Ah, <sighs> camel sis. Okay. What next? Print new line. Console log. Alright, what next? No kidding. That compiled. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, that's pretty exciting. Um, wow. Alright, so I know how to get a cursor, which is just really cool. That's very exciting. Edit found cursor example. Cool, so I figure out how to uh, get a cursor, which is just great. And um, now I could maybe adapt this function to use such a cursor. Uh, so I'm going to just rename it there. And the formatting is all cattywampus, so let's format. Yarn format. Oh, not yarn. Red format. Ugh. Oh, camel format not found on tree. I swear to Pete. Uh, right, because the extension's being a little grouch with me. Let's just do the easy one. Easy X. O camel format. Camel format. O camel format. Oh, well, that's like a bummer. What? Do I not have O camel format in my package, Jason? Uh, these need to go away. These need to come down here. Um. I guess I don't have a camel format installed. Let's install it. Easy add. I don't know if this is how it works. Opam o camel format. Wait. Easy add dev. It looks like command left on this machine. It switches terminals. Uh, to figure that out. Okay, we'll format. There you are, buddy. Oh, now you have to compile? <laughs> Why didn't you compile? Uh, Alright, whatever. Cool. So, um, I'm already gonna... I already have a connection. Uh, con and C. Uh, 
Okay. I'll just do an alias to that in here. And uppercase equals, so 1960 something. Declare. Uh, air cursor. Cursor for select everything from. For select everything from. And we already know the name of our table. So we don't need that malarkey. We don't need these frivolous parens either. And it is um, sensor stats. Sick. Cool. So fetch in air cursor. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Tuple, 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 tuple. Um, yeah, man, let's just, like, try it. I'm pretty excited about this. Let's see if we can't just print it. I mean, that's cool. Uh, well, we gotta run that thing now. Uh-oh. We got ourselves a compiler here. Brit. Brit and Jemaine. Uh, line 32. Hmm. Hey, this thing's gotta be matched. Why is it unmatched is my question. Why is it unmatched? Looks like ignore, ignore, see, finish was there before. Whoa! Ignore, ignore, see, finish. Uh, this is the thing after a loop. I do anything, other weird stuff. Oh no. Okay, let's get back. Ignore, ignore, see, finish. Um, uh, come on, man. Work with me here. Oh, it's probably this one. It was probably right here. Okay. Everyone's having fun. Everyone's having a whole lot of fun. And now I need to actually call this thing. So let's do it. Um, let's do it here. Now, what's a crouchy about? This expression has type unit A, but an expression was expected. Did you forget to provide a unit as an argument? Probably. I mean, probably. I don't know, did I? Uh, what exec? Method for exec are incompatible. Oh, you know what I can do? Well, actually, I shouldn't need to do that. Right, I shouldn't need to do that. I just meddled with this and it worked before, right? That's kind of my life in OCaml. Like, tweak very little <laughs> and try and compile. Uh, okay, so all I thought I was doing, you know was some, uh, what's going on? Like, why is that making any difference? I'm essentially saying just do some nasty side effect. Right? Just do some nasty side effect. And, uh, it'd be cool. Con. Con. Ooh! I bet it's because... Yeah, 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 this is coercing con into some other thing. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to explicitly annotate it. PostgreSQL connection. Yeah, nice try, everyone. Nice try. So, you're going to be cool? 
Whoa. Okay. That was cool. It worked. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure why I was grumpy before. Um, maybe some generics were just uncool. Zero, 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 zero. <laughs> well, that's not particularly interesting, is it? Oh. Um, internal server error. Oh, that's disappointing. What if I don't call air stats? Oh, connection already finished. Well, that's no good. I don't want to close that connection. Close the cursor, sure. C, finish. Oh, <laughs> that's what C is. C, exec, C, exec. No, we're not going to finish this little buddy. He's my friend, for crying out loud. Don't finish him. Uh oh. Uh, maybe that. Cross those fingers. All right, let's try this again. So, okay, there we go. I was just closing that darn thing. Okay, so this has sensor data. Uh, relation sensor data. Hey, it doesn't exist. Yeah, of course it doesn't exist. Who's calling sensor? data. I mean, for crying out loud. Syntax error at sensor data at character 10. Statement select sensor data. Uh, select. I mean, I'm not even... What? <laughs> Is it coming from this server? Oh. No, it's not coming. It's old hat. That's an old message. Sick. Okay, so this is like uh, no good though. Um, it's no good. Fetch in this cursor is um, not doing any good stuff. So maybe what I need to do is get rid of that. Let's just call the good stuff, right? Uh, console.log uh, hmm. get res can I just do that? what's going to happen there? I'm not really sure what the data structure is here it's not abundantly clear <laughs> unknown, okay sure uh, bummer, get tuple um Come on. That's not what we want. This is what we want. Okay. Console log tuple. Tuple. What's in there? Show me what's in there, man. I gotta know. Hey, now that, on the other hand, is cool. Quite interesting. That is quite interesting. Now notice that it's all stringy. That sucks. That's not what I would like. I would like it to be not stringy. It's also not showing me the like. What's the order here? All right. What the heck is the order? Uh. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's make it an even eight. How do you what do you say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfecto. Okay, so you know, we can get data out. Um, I just need to update my query and apparently do some type marshalling, which seems weak sauce. Why is it it might be just because it's getting stringified. It might be because it's get just getting stringified here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, now let's just try writing it to a stream. That could be cool. You know what? Let's save that for next week. That was fun. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining. I had a great time. 
I hope you did too. Bye-bye.